Should you invest in an at-home red light therapy device? What do they even do? Today, we're gonna talk about them. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board-certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget, subscribe to the channel. When it comes to at-home red light therapy devices, I feel like they've gained a lot of momentum or they've also gained like really good marketing traction in the past few years, but they also tend to be quite the investment. So I think it's reasonable that you all asked me to talk about red light devices because if you're going to make the investment, you kind to want to be sure that it's actually going to do the thing you expect it to. Whether you recognize it or not, you already understand light's ability to affect biological processes and biological structures within the skin. Because how many times have you heard a dermatologist tell you to limit your UV light or ultraviolet light exposure? And that's because we know ultraviolet light can exert some negative effects on the skin, like damaging cellular DNA and breaking down structural proteins that support the skin. But ultraviolet light is very different than red light. It has a shorter wavelength and sits on a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. While ultraviolet light is quite damaging for skin, red light and near infrared light, so the wavelengths of light that sit next to red light on the electromagnetic spectrum are known to be quite regenerative for the skin and have some really positive effects. Red light was initially sort of touted for its ability to accelerate wound healing, but in recognizing that ability of red light, they also noticed that it helped reduce redness and inflammation and really help with skin rejuvenation overall by reducing fine lines and wrinkles, improving elasticity and just evening out the overall tone of the skin. This process of red light and near infrared light inducing these positive effects on the skin is known as photobiomodulation. With photobiomodulation, you essentially have a little packet of red light or near infrared light called a photon interacting with a cell within your skin and causing that cell to create some type of chemical change that alters how it functions. Depending on which cell within your skin is affected, it might proliferate better. It may be induced to repair some type of damage that it has, or it may just function better and produce new proteins like collagen and elastin, which is great for skin rejuvenation. And because of all these amazing positive effects of red light and near infrared light, these devices have been used in dermatology offices and plastic surgery offices and wound healing centers for quite some time in order to make the skin behave in a more optimal way. But of course, then that creates this market for having at home red light therapy devices where people don't have to go in the office to get sort of the same effects. And really then the question is raised, are these at-home devices still therapeutic enough to be worth it? I definitely think there are some at-home red light therapy devices that can induce some really positive changes within the skin, but of course not all red light devices are created equal or are engineered the same way. So I'm going to review some of the specifications that I look for in an at-home red light therapy device to help me kind of understand whether or not it has a high likelihood of being effective for me. So number one, you want to look at the wavelength of light being emitted by your at-home device. So red light and near infrared light sort of exist in a range on the electromagnetic spectrum. It's not just one specific wavelength of light. However, when it comes to how effective that light really is in inducing that photobiomodulatory change, we know that there are two wavelengths of light that are most specific and helpful, and that's 633 nanometers for red light and 830 nanometers for infrared light. That means when I'm looking for an at-home device, I want it to specifically say that it emits 633 nanometers light and 830 nanometer light. And it doesn't give me this broad range of red and near infrared light because that lack of specificity may also mean a lack of efficacy. Generally, higher quality LEDs or light emitting diodes, which is the light source for these at-home devices, tend to be more precise, but also tend to be a little bit more expensive, which is why some of these more touted devices that have more proven efficacy also tend to cost a bit more. In addition to precise wavelengths, another thing you wanna look for in an at-home red light therapy device is its irradiance, which essentially is the intensity of that device. This is usually measured in milliwatts per centimeter squared and essentially means how much energy is hitting one square centimeter of your skin per second. And the reason the irradiance or the intensity of the light is so important is because even if you're using the correct wavelengths of light, you need enough of that light hitting the target tissue quickly enough to induce the biological response that you're seeking. Now, the optimal clinical irradiance sort of has a big range to depending on what studies you're looking at, but somewhere between 40 milliwatts per centimeter squared and 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared is thought to be ideal. This is not just based on how many bulbs are in your at-home device, but also how much light each bulb is 
actually emitting. So it's not really enough to just like count the bulbs and compare two masks head to head. I would argue that you should either ask the company for the irradiance or look for the irradiance in the published data about the device that you're getting to make sure that you're in that range or close to it. If a company is unwilling to share or publish data on the irradiance of its device, I kind of take that as a red flag. I think that is a key parameter you need to look at. And if it's not available to you, then you really don't know what you're getting. And then the final thing I really look for in an at-home red light therapy device is how frequently you need to use it and how long you need to use it for. In my mind, that is the dose of light that you're getting. If the intensity or the irradiance of an at-home therapy device is higher, then the treatment time is usually less. The other thing that's important to note is how close the bulbs sit to your face. That all kind of goes into the calculation of how intense and how high of a dose you're getting of red light. So for me, the kind of ideal at-home red light therapy device is going to list specific wavelengths of light that it's emitting, 633 nanometers and 830 nanometers. And it's going to have an irradiance that is comparable to what has been shown to be clinically effective. So somewhere near 40 would be ideal. Also, just from a practicality standpoint, I cannot use an at-home device that requires me to have it on for 30 minutes or an hour a day. It needs to be something that is actually able to be fit into my lifestyle. And if it's in the form of a mask, which most of these at-home devices are, I need that mask to be comfortable and I need the mask to actually cover my entire facial skin or all the skin that I'm trying to treat. I'd also like that device to sort of be portable if possible. I have a little kid and I need to be able to get up and move and so I don't necessarily want to be plugged into a wall or stuck there during my treatment. A couple other things I'll mention because it often comes up when I talk about using LED light at home for myself is one, does it make melasma worse? And no, it should not. High quality LED devices should not emit heat like at all. It should not really feel warm on your face. And it's really the heat of a red light device that would make me concerned about exacerbating melasma. And I want to be totally clear. We're talking about red light. There are blue light LED masks that have the potential to exacerbate hyperpigmentation in some individuals. Another question that often comes up is, is this okay for my eyes? Like, can I have my eyes open when I'm using an at-home red light therapy device? Most of the manufacturers will put on their packaging whether or not it's considered safe for your eyes. I personally like to have my eyes closed. I don't wear goggles, but I use it as a time to relax and I just sort of lay back. Also, I kind of want it to help the skin on the top of my eyelids. So I think it works better if your eyes are closed. Another question I get asked a lot is, well, how does this fit into your skincare routine? And I really use this on clean, dry skin exclusively. So if I'm doing it in the evening, which is usually when I'm doing it, I will shower. And then after the shower, I'll do my red light and then I'll go in and put all my serums and products on. Or if I'm not showering that night, I will wash my face. And then after I wash my face, I will do my red light exposure. And then I will go in and finish my skincare routine. Now deciding whether or not red light therapy is really worth it to you can be a tricky question to answer. And I can't answer that for you, but I can tell you why it's worth it for me. So one, I have rosacea and as part of my rosacea, I sort of have this low grade chronic inflammation of my skin. And I really find that when I use red light, it helps reduce my redness and also makes my skin feel better. And I didn't really realize that until I tried red light. We have red light at my office that I got after a hydrofacial and it made my redness calm down so quickly. I was like, oh, I need to get red light in my life more consistently. The other thing is I already do a lot to improve the quality of my skin. I really punished my skin when I was younger and I spent so much time outdoors, not protected from the sun. And so I use sunscreen now. I try to avoid midday sun. I use a topical retinoid to reverse some of the signs of photo aging. I do in-office procedures, microneedling, lasers, Botox, fillers, all the things, but red light comes at my skin from a totally different biological angle. And there's really nothing in my routine right now that does the same thing that red light does. And so to me, it's just an added bonus. And I'm a dermatologist, so I'm kind of going to do it all. I actually became motivated to use red light during my pregnancy. When you're pregnant, so many things are off limits. You can't use your retinoid. I couldn't do my Botox. I wasn't doing any laser procedures. And I was like, ah, like, mm. and also like your skin just goes crazy during pregnancy. And so bringing red light into my routine felt like I was able to do something really positive for my skin. Now, if you're thinking about using red light during your pregnancy, it's something you should talk with your OBGYN about, but mine was fine with it. And as a dermatologist, I felt very comfortable introducing it to my routine. The red light device that I personally use is the Omnilux contour face mask. It looks like this. It is super creepy if you have it on and all the lights in your house are off. So I've definitely scared my husband on more than one occasion. 
occasion. But when I was looking into what red light therapy mask I wanted to bring into my routine, I did quite a bit of research looking at all the parameters that I discussed with you earlier in this video. And this sort of checked all the boxes for me and was at the right price point. Now, is this a cheap mask? Certainly not. It's several hundred dollars. So still definitely an investment, but there were other devices in the thousand multi-thousand dollar range that didn't offer much extra for me. And then there were a lot of cheaper devices that didn't really have specific parameters either on their wavelength or the irradiance that they used. And so I decided not to go with those either. For this specific mask, when you start using it, use it for 10 minutes at a time, three to five times a week for four to six weeks. And then you go into sort of a maintenance mode. I've just continued to use it basically every other day. And that has worked really well for me. Aside from helping with my redness and sort of the general uncomfortableness of my skin when my rosacea is flaring, I've also found that it's helped with the fine lines up around my eyes and also the fine lines around my mouth. So when I make this face, which is, this is embarrassing to admit, but it causes this like ripple effect in my skin that I really disliked for a long time. And that is so much better since starting red light therapy. So just to give you a sense, this is what the mask looks like. It's totally portable. You can charge this and then it turns on like that. There are two straps, which I like because it really helps hold all of the LEDs really close to your face. I also have the neck and chest version of this mask and I use it for the same reasons. Obviously I don't have rosacea on my neck and my chest, but I do want sort of all of the anti-aging effects I can get from this and it just wraps around like so. So in the evening I put on this and my face mask and I just look super hot. Also, I think subconsciously I noted that Omnilux was sort of a pioneer when it came to red light therapy and they are who create a lot of the in-office devices that we use. And so I felt more confident in using one of their at-home devices. This is not a sponsored video at all. There are definitely other red light therapy masks that are effective and have good specs, but I haven't personally tried them. And it's very hard for me to recommend something that I haven't personally used. If you have additional questions about red light therapy, definitely put it in the question box below. I wanna make sure that all of your questions are answered. Also, if you'd like me to do a video where I compare different red light devices, I'd be happy to do that for you. Would you invest in a red light therapy device? Share in the comments. No judgment either way. I am genuinely curious. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.